I'm only gonna say it one more time and then you're gonna lose the privilege to eat dinner. The camera's rolling so I can't get that mad. <laughs> it helps keep me under control. It, it's a good thing the camera's on. To live in fear of the world has created a great vulnerability and a blind spot for me where I have broken hearts and I've caused people to suffer and I have betrayed sacred trust. On this channel, we have covered family vloggers many times, and we have gone over the ethics of family vlogging, especially when it comes to a channel known as Eight Passengers. Now, if you've been following me for any amount of time, you might be aware that I have been covering the Eight Passengers situation, as it is one of the most horrific examples of family vlogging to date. Ruby and her husband, soon to be ex-husband, had a channel with their six children where they would vlog their lives every single day, invading their children's privacy more often than not, and using very questionable questionable parenting tactics that, as I've mentioned in previous videos, gave them a lot of backlash. When they had first started receiving backlash on their YouTube channel many years ago, they started sending out cease and desist letters to anybody who had talked about them. This, on top of the parenting methods that a lot of people were already concerned with at the time, were the first of many red flags that would eventually lead us to where we are now. Which, if you don't already know, has ended up with Ruby Frankie, the mother in Eight Passengers, and her partner in a new project called Connections being arrested for treating some of Ruby's children terribly. Since I have made many videos on this topic already, I'm not going to do a huge recap in this video. I think at this point most people are already aware, and if you're not, I'll link some of my previous videos down in the description below so you can check them out. But if you're curious, I'll just briefly go over some of the most concerning things that have happened on the 8 Passengers channel, as well as what has happened with this this connections program. This included many points of Ruby stating that she would not feed her children as punishment, including punishment for forgetting to pack a lunch when the child was in like first grade. We're about to play that infamous clip one more time. I just got a text message uh, from a teacher and she said that did not pack a lunch today and can I bring a lunch over to the school? This happens quite often when you're having raising children um, because I know that her teacher is uncomfortable. I absolutely hate the way she emphasizes uncomfortable. With her being hungry and not having a lunch and it would ease her discomfort if I came to the school with a lunch. Um, but I, I responded and just said, was responsible for making her lunches in the morning and she actually told me she did pack a lunch. So the natural outcome is she's just going to need to be hungry and hopefully Hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch. There were several other instances that were recorded where she had either refused to send a lunch to her child while they were at school. Sorry to tell you this honey but Unless you find a friend who's willing to share some of their food with you, I don't, I don't think you're going to be able to eat. But if you're not responsible for your lunch and your lunch money, that's the natural consequence. And I'm really sorry you're learning this the hard way. I will have a wonderful, yummy snack. Just hang in there today and, and just make it, make up your mind you're going to be really careful and make sure you grab your stuff when you go to school next time. And maybe you have a, a good friend who will share some of their sandwich with you or something. Well, I'm really sorry. He sounded like he was going to cry. Or would weaponize food saying that they will lose their privilege to eat? I'm only going to say it one more time and then you're going to lose the privilege to eat dinner. Stop crying or I'm going to have you go upstairs and you won't have any breakfast. There was another point when they had sent one of their children to a troubled teen program, which I have had a lot of people requesting me talk about this for a while now and I do plan on still doing a dedicated video on troubled teen programs, but if you're interested in seeing me talk about it a little bit, I'll link another video in the description below that is a bit older where I discussed it in more detail, but troubled teen programs are really, really not the greatest thing to put your kid into, and if you do just a little bit of research, you could understand why. Nevertheless, Ruby and her husband Kevin had decided to send her son to a troubled teen program or a wilderness program in a place called Anastasi, and this is a place where he was not allowed to sleep in a bed. He had to sleep on the cold, hard ground with, I believe, nothing but the clothes on his back. Shortly after he had returned, they had 
had made a vlog where he had admitted to their audience that Ruby had taken away his bed, and Ruby, seemingly surprised by him saying that, talked about how she had taken his bed away for playing a prank on his brother, telling him that they were going to Disney World when they weren't. And they had taken the bed away for months, making him sleep on a beanbag chair. This created a lot of outrage and backlash, and this is when she had made this video with her husband. What enrages me is the fact that her husband does not seem to get nearly as much attention as he should in this situation, because even though he wasn't present for the event that had gotten Ruby and Jody arrested, he was still complicit with a lot of things that had led up to a certain point until he left. The reason why he seemingly left was because Ruby had been getting really involved with this program by Jody Hildebrandt called Connections. And as I had gone over in several different videos, this program seemed very cult-like, in my opinion. They used a lot of the same language over and over again, such as a living in truth and living in distortion, to justify anything, including being over-controlling to everyone else in their household. If I remember correctly, there was one video where Ruby was talking about how her children deserve no privacy at all, because that would allow them to live in distortion. I have four walls in the bathroom. That gives privacy. When my child begins using those four walls to do things that are deceptive, they lose the privilege of privacy. Why? Because they're not concerned about privacy. Ruby and her husband even decided that one year they were going to get all of their children gifts except for their two youngest for Christmas because they were being ungrateful and living in distortion, so they were going to give them the gift of love and truth instead. Granted, gifts aren't a necessity like food is. It does seem like it would be really upsetting for a child to see all of their siblings get gifts except for themselves, and where this goes to later on it really reflects on Ruby's character. As I had mentioned, this past summer, Ruby and Jody had been arrested. What had happened was in August of 2023, one of Ruby's children had escaped their home and went to a neighbor's house looking for food and water. This child was desperate for help, and the conditions that he and the other child left at their house were in were absolutely horrendous. A snippet from an article by Desert News, which we will look into more later, stated, I had a 12-year-old boy show up here at my front door asking for help, and he said he just came from a neighbor's house. And we know there's been problems at this neighbor's house. He's emaciated, he's got tape around his legs, he's hungry, and he's thirsty, the man told the dispatcher. And by the way, these children were sent to the hospital due to the condition that they were in. Naturally, this led to the arrest of Ruby and Jody, and they originally faced six counts of aggravated child Due to their plea deals, they were each able to knock down their counts to four instead of six. And as per my last video update on the situation, I mentioned that in February, they were going to receive their sentencing. And well, that has finally happened. The sentence will be that Ms. Frankie serve four counts for one to 15 year sentences based on her convictions for four counts of aggravated child again they will serve consecutively be served consecutively pursuant to the party's agreement and the applicable statute under the applicable statute the court finds that a cons that consecutive sentences are appropriate an article written on Desert News states, Jody Hildebrandt and Ruby Frankie sentenced to four consecutive terms in prison. Both women pled guilty to four counts of child abuse. So each sentence was for one of those counts. Jody Hildebrandt and Ruby Frankie appeared before a St. George courtroom on Tuesday for their sentencing. Frankie was sentenced to serve one to 15 years in prison for each of the four counts of abuse she pled guilty to. I'm redacting the judge's name because he's not a public figure, he's just the one who sentenced them. The judge said these sentences would be served consecutively. Though the sentences may add up to 60 years consecutively, Utah Code states that when a court imposes consecutive sentences, the maximum amount of time that can be served is 30 years. In my opinion, just give them the full 60 years. They deserve every single year, and even that might be a light sentence to them. The judge sentenced Hildebrandt to four consecutive terms of one to 15 years in prison for each count of aggravated child abuse. 
Pardons. The Utah Board of Pardons and Parole will determine the exact amount of time Frankie and Hildebrandt will spend in prison. I really don't know if they're only going to serve four years, but that would be the minimum. And according to this article and others, the maximum due to the Utah Code would be 30 years in prison. I think they should be serving life, but that's just me. Both Frankie and Hildebrandt had pled guilty to four counts of aggravated child abuse, a second degree felony, in relation to Frankie's two children, ages 9 and 11. Frankie was a YouTube channel content creator and Hildebrandt, the founder of Connections Classroom, was her former business partner. As part of the plea agreement, Frankie had agreed to testify against Hildebrandt. They were both arrested in August of 2023 after one of Frankie's children ran to a neighbor's house to ask for help. I want to know what the outcome would have been if she hadn't pled against Jody Hildebrandt. Would she have served a longer sentence? This doesn't make sense to me because I would imagine that pleading against Jody would mean that she would likely serve a harsher punishment, but it seems like they served the same punishment. So did that not count for anything? And did she just backstab her only friend in this situation? You know what? Good riddance to both of them. Good riddance. Initially, both women were charged with six counts of child abuse. Two of those counts were removed in the plea deals. Could those two counts have been removed for this plea deal with Ruby testifying against Jody? That wouldn't make sense though because both of them had those two extra counts removed. In other news, during Ruby's sentencing, she took about 10 minutes to give a speech while simultaneously bawling her eyes out. And normally, I'm not the type of person to say they're fake crying or that they're not being genuine, but this does seem very performative. Number one, this is a person who was very aware of her actions when they took place. How can you not be with the things that she had done? She claims that she was being manipulated by Jody. In my opinion, I think they are equally as awful and terrible people. But again, that's just my opinion. I'm not going to play the entire clip. You can check out the video linked in the description below that goes to Law and Crime Network for the full thing, but I will share just a few snippets, mostly the ones that are coherent and understandable because halfway through it, you could barely understand what she's saying. It also sounds like she's eating the microphone while she's talking. Frankie has a statement she'd like to make. She does. You don't have to bend down the... Okay, thank you. I would like to make a statement without any intent to change my stipulated sentence. For the past four years, I've chosen to follow counsel and guidance that has led me into a dark delusion. My distorted version of reality went largely unchecked as I would isolate from anyone who challenged me. She's still using words like distortion. I am in disbelief. I was led to believe that this world was an evil place filled with cops who control, hospitals that injure, government agencies that brainwash, church leaders who lie and lust, husbands who refuse to protect, and children who need abused. So she's essentially saying that she was brainwashed into believing all of these things. I'm not sure if that's true or not. Only she will know the answer to that. What she says next makes things very interesting. Jody Hildebrandt was never my business partner, nor was I ever employed by her. I have never received wages from her or connections. There is one very interesting thing I want to note here. She mentions that Jody has been helping her family with her son since 2019. Jody was employed as my son's counselor in 2019, and in 2020, I paid her to be my mentor. In one of my previous videos, I said this. Jody claims to be a mental health expert. Now, my issue with this is that Ruby has apparently been working with Connections for the past four years. This is new. I've been studying this for four years. So I question, was Connections one of the groups they sought mental health advice from when they mentioned it in this clip? And the things that we show and share and the things that many of you are criticizing and calling are actually things that mental health professionals have 
uh, counseled us to do. At the time of recording that video, I was just guessing and speculating on the situation. I had no solid confirmation that this actually was the case, but I feel like this does provide confirmation to that assumption now. And even if she wasn't directly involved in that specific situation, we do now know that she has been involved in their lives since 2019, which was around the time that they started getting very popular on YouTube. Once again, that also leaves me with a lot of questions for Ruby's husband, who seems to be very very conveniently absent from this situation. Again, I want to reiterate that I understand he was not present during this situation that got them arrested. What I'm saying is if Jody was around since 2019 and these practices were slowly starting to implement into their daily lives, then surely he had seen some red flags and signs that he could have intervened, right? That's at least my opinion once again. Anyway, getting back to this 10 minute long video of her blubbering and barely being understandable, she basically gives apologies to her family, her parents, her cousins, her nieces, her nephews, her sisters, her husband, her children, everyone in her life. It seems very performative as she says at the end, thank you to the medical team that helped her children after she them and also thank you to the judge. She acted in a very similar way last month when she was accepting the charges. I'm just having a very hard time believing that she is being genuine after everything that she had done. With that being said, I really hope that this is the last time I have to talk about eight passengers, at least to the extent that we have been discussing them with all of these updates and new breaking stories. I know this video is on the shorter side, like I mentioned in the beginning. If you want to see any more in-depth videos on this situation, I will leave my previous videos linked in the description below. My hope is that this story has finally reached its conclusion. I'll be completely honest, the very first time I talked about eight passengers and this family vlogging channel and even talking about connections and Jody Hildebrandt, I never thought that this is where things would end up. This is a situation that is absolutely horrific and I am confident that this will go down as the worst, if not one of the worst, family vlogging channels in history. This mother is absolutely unhinged and soulless in my opinion and this woman is batshit insane in my opinion. Actually, both of them are both of those things. Again, in my opinion. I genuinely hope that the children of the eight passengers family are able to feel safer, be in a happier state of life, and are able to start living life like a functional human being without having a camera in their face and also without being abused. I also truly hope that nobody can be affected by connections again because like I've mentioned in previous videos, it wasn't just Ruby Frankie's family that was affected by this or Jody Hildebrandt's family. This was affecting hundreds if not thousands of different people because this brought in a lot of eyes and a lot of people were asking for their genuine advice. I hope anybody who has ever taken their advice reconsiders anything that Ruby or Jody or anybody else involved in this program has ever told them because before all of this even took place this past summer they have been spewing out very harmful advice to a lot of parents out there. With that being said thank you so much if you've made it all the way to the end of this video. Again, I'm sorry that this one's a shorter one. Thank you so much to everybody supporting me over on Patreon, and thank you so much to anybody who has given me a super thanks. I will see you in the next video.